With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Watson Brown Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. That's Tennessee Tech head coach Watson Brown, and I'm your host, Buddy Pearson. Well, for Tennessee Tech alumni and the student body, it's the most wonderful time of the year as the Golden Eagles celebrate homecoming on Saturday by hosting the Red Hawks of Southeast Missouri at 1.30 at Tucker Stadium. Coach, homecoming is a very special time at TTU. It, it is everywhere I've ever been, and uh, I think college homecoming even more in high school because the alums come back, and a lot of foreign players come back. I think that's the neat thing is you get to see a lot of the old guys, and uh, I'm one of those old guys too. But uh, <laughs> uh, that's what I enjoy about it. And you and you really want to you want to perform well. You want to put on a good show, and you want to play very hard. Now the Golden Eagles are coming off a tough loss uh, to perhaps the hottest team in the league in Eastern Illinois. Coach, how do you bounce back after that loss? Oh, you bounce back. You just you just get to the next one. Uh, we have played the big three. And uh, got one of them, so I mean we got to look at it as a positive, not a negative, and and uh, get ready, take some confidence from it. Um, uh, I, I thought that we played uh, offensively not really that bad Saturday. We did have a couple of st uh, little stupid things, but we didn't play near as well on defense as we've been playing. Uh, but I, I, th I think with, we're we gained a lot from these three weeks. I don't think we're in bad shape in health, and right. uh, hopefully we're going to play well Saturday. All right. Well. Let's check out the first half highlights between the Panthers and the Golden Eagles, brought to you by Wendy's Breakfast of Cookville. And Coach, probably one of the best quarterbacks in the league, if not the best, Jalen Whitlow on fourth down, finds a receiver in the end zone. Well, and that's a that's a kind of a blown coverage. We should have a corner sitting back there in the deep part of the end zone, and it, it didn't happen, and, and uh, that was fourth down. So this play really, they should not have scored right here. We should have made them throw the ball away and uh, we would have gotten the ball on the three-yard line. Uh, Tennessee Tech defense coming up big. James Shugley forces a fumble on Keandre Gober. Harrison Reed recovers. Some good turnovers for your defense. Yeah, we got that's about all we did Saturday defensively, but we did get a couple three turnovers with them and they had not turned the ball over in uh, three games. Um, quarterback had thrown 163 straight passes without an interception, so uh, we got an interception from him too and and uh, but but we've just got to get back in, and and get back to disciplined uh, defense that I know we can play. Darian Stone finds his favorite target, Cody Matthews, with a nice catch going out of bounds. Yep, and again, um, we've we've just got to keep finding ways, buddy. In my personal opinion, Darian Stone, Cody Matthews, Brock McCoy, and and Ladarius Van Leer have just got to be the ones touching the football for us. It's obvious when you watch us play now; those are the four guys and. And I would throw uh, Radier and Noor a little bit in there with that, and and uh, we've just got to do a better job of all three of those, all four of those guys touching the ball. After the 25-yard field goal by John Arnold, Jalen Whitlow with a one-yard touchdown run, then Nick Bruno with a 22-yard field goal, and then Adam Drake a three-yard touchdown reception from Whitlow. Look at that pass. Uh, it's just right on the money, and it's not great coverage by James. He can he can cover better than that. He's out of position a little bit. Uh, he's too far inside on the receiver. Uh, but a beautiful throw and catch. And uh, Drake, we know Drake from two years now. Yeah. And uh, he was really a good player last year. And uh, he had 60 catches coming into the game uh, Saturday. And, and really, he was the one that beat us uh, with the pass uh, last Saturday. So what was the mood at halftime? Really I, a little upset because we had just were not playing well defensively. I thought that was uh, – I went straight to the defense to talk to those guys. We weren't taking dive quarterback pitch proper. Uh, we, had, we had given them too many just pure old one-on-ones to a receiver where they just beat our corner, and we had to start mixing our coverages a little bit better, hopefully, with that. Uh, thought we'd need to come after them a little bit more, and, and uh, we did those things in the second half, played better on defense in the second half. Yeah, the Golden Eagles try to keep the Panthers close as we check out the second half highlights brought to you by Miller Lite. 
Panthers come out in the second half, and Coach, is not exactly how you want to start the second half. A 90-yard touchdown pass from Whitlow to Adam Drake. No, we were pressing them, and uh, they, I think they saw the press, and they just threw a takeoff, and, and our corner was there. He just could not jump him for the ball, and a great player uh, uh, making a great play. And uh, so that was, that was too easy to start with in the second half. Here's a nice interception by Jay Rudwall on a, a seam pass they're trying to throw, and and I don't, th I don't think Whitlow saw Jay there. But no, not at all. Good again, job. By nice, nice play by him. Rudwell there. And then Ladarius Van Leer, all he does is score touchdowns. Look at this run. Oh, this highlight. Spin. Another <laughs> missed tackle. High another spin. Another so missed tackle. I'd be throwing up by now. <laughs> uh, to a spin he's like he's on the tilt to whirl. <laughs> uh, but, uh, again, I think he had nine carries for maybe 58, 60 yards in the game. We've got to, he's got to carry the football more than he's carrying it. And he needs to catch three or four passes, five passes a game. Uh, this was a beautiful throw here yeah. right in the seam. I thought uh, our inside linebacker could have got there. Honestly, this, we, did, we didn't turn it over bad at all. This was a bad turnover. It was a, really a misread by our quarterback that created that one and got it right back with a nice turnover right here uh, by our defense. And I uh, thought we did play better defense. I think we can carry our second-half defense to get back to – to what we were early in the year. I thought around game five or six, our defensive football team was in the top two or three in the league and here in the last few weeks. But we've also played yeah. Eastern Kentucky, Jacksonville State, and EIU in the last three weeks. I do think our offense has improved from the start of the season. Uh, we, we had a lot of improving to do, mm -hmm. but I do think we've gotten a little better on offense. We got a tight end back a little bit the other day. That's our freshman tight end, Charles Rutledge, who had broke his hand in northern Iowa, played a little bit in the game, Good. so we were able to put a tight end on the field just a tad, and I think that will help us in the next three games. So the final score, Eastern Illinois 41, Tennessee Tech 10. You did win the turnover battle. Eastern Illinois was plus 10 over Tennessee Tech in the turnover ratio coming in, but I think uh, you won that battle 4-1. to we, they're just a better team. Uh, yeah. You you win the four to one battle, you usually get a chance to win the game, and yeah. we're we're still down thirty one points. So just tells you. You look at the stat sheet. You saw it. It's uh, they're just better than us right now. We're 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 not ready for prime time just yet, <laughs> but uh, we're we're climbing back there, and we're going to get back there again, and we'll be back to where we'll get a shot at EAU again here. By far the best quarterback, possibly the best offense we've seen. I think it is the best offense we've seen. Uh, it may be the best quarterback we've seen, yeah. uh, especially with what he's done in the last four or five weeks. He's been really hot, and uh, uh, he's a big kid, yeah. can run really well, and a better thrower than we all gave him credit for, in my <laughs> opinion. So I do think it is the best offense we've played all year. Yep. Well, meanwhile, there were other OVC games going on as we check out the OVC scoreboard, brought to you by the OVC Digital Network. A lot of action, a lot of high scoring going on around the OVC. Not much defense being played. It was in, at Murray State. UT Martin 62, Murray State 38, Abu Torre 29 carries, 234 yards and three touchdowns. And, oh, by the way, the quarterback for Murray State, Katie Humphreys, threw for 425 yards and five touchdowns. Elsewhere, Eastern Kentucky got off to a <coughs> slow start against the Tigers but come back in a big way, 56-42. It was Jared McClain. He uh, threw for 70 and a touchdown. He ran for 139 yards and two scores. Michael German threw for 326 yards and four touchdowns for TSU. And it was Jacksonville State coming off a win over Tech. And poor Austin P didn't have much of a chance. Uh, Jacksonville State wins a big 56 to nothing. Uh, a lot of uh, different uh, people contributing for Jacksonville State. Demarcus James, 17 carries, 99 yards. And Miles Jones, 77 yards and three touchdowns. As we take a look at the standings, there you see it is Jacksonville State. Still on top with an uh, unblemished 5-0 mark. Eastern Kentucky and Eastern Illinois right there at one loss. Well, and now they start playing each other. As yeah. uh, we said earlier, we're the only team that's beaten one of those three schools. Um, they've beaten the rest of the league. Um, and a few games left between them and, and some of the, 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 from the four down, I'd say. Right. But really now they start playing each other, and this is where the uh, league is going to, fall out and see who the champion is in these next two weeks. And Tennessee Tech certainly still with a chance to finish 4-4 four and four in the league. Uh, you still have Southeast Missouri this week. You've got Austin P in two weeks, two winnable games, and a respectable finish after those top three uh, with everybody else remaining. Well, I think that's what we're trying to do. We still have goals. And if we could, and I really, I think it'll be us, Seymour, UT Martin. It's going to be one of us that, uh, uh, or two of us tie, whatever. But uh, 
I really think that's a very important goal to try to win these two conference games and and be the best of the rest, if you could possibly say it that way. And we've got another nationally ranked team stuck in there with that yeah. as we go to. We're called Chattanooga. Hey, stick around. We're going to take a little break, but we'll be right back with more of the Watson Brown Show. Don't go away. Tennessee Tech tickets available at 931-372-3940 or ttusports.com. Welcome back to the Watson Brown Show. You know, the Golden Eagles have some very talented linebackers, and one of them is Trey Thompson, who just so happens to be our Golden Eagle player profile this week, and that is brought to you by Zaxby's. My name is Trey Thompson. I play linebacker, and I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I actually started playing football in about uh, fourth or fifth grade. I was, more like, I was more like a baseball player starting, but my dad asked me if I wanted to play football, and I was like, eh, I'm, I'll stick with baseball, but he told me if I just keep playing, I might like it, and I kept playing. I was actually kind of good at it, so I just kept playing. My biggest inspiration is my father and my brother. Um, my dad, he was always getting on me, playing sports and doing the right thing, and maybe it'll get you a scholarship, you can play football. and. I said my brother because he's a senior this year, but he's going to Northwestern next year. And I was just, we all just had that, that competition thing in the family, so I just try to stay better, just keeps me humble, and he does well, I try to do well. Uh, my teammates would describe me as just a, just a funny guy from Cincinnati. Um, I just try to do the right thing and do my job, and we're out, we're out just <laughs> cracking laughs. So I was just trying to be funny. I mean, I never take things really too seriously, but just trying to have a good time in life, you know. My favorite part of playing linebacker is when you make when you make that good tackle, and you know you know you do the keys, you read the assignments right, you make that big play, you make that tackle, and you get up, and your teammates are all hyped, and you're all hyped, and you're just and the crowd's roaring, you're just ready to go. You just you know you helped your team that one play, and you just feel like you did something right. My first snap as a Golden Eagle was against Indiana State. I had just came off. Um, a torn meniscus, and it was towards the end of the game, and I was like, Thompson, get in there, and I was like, all right, let's go, let's go. <laughs> and I went in there, and it was just, I was kind of nervous. I didn't know if my knee was gonna be able to help me or not, but I mean, I went out there, and it was a good time. I felt comfortable, and as the season went on, I just got acclimated with the system and everything, and now I just feel part of the team. Coach, very talented player, and you can see the, the club on his hand. <laughs> I think he's got, uh, he may have to wear the rest of the year. Um, he's had a bad shoulder. He's had the broken broken hand. He took the place of Trey Goff, that, uh, our all OBC linebacker that we lost for the year that we'll get back next year. With his experience that he's gotten, we'll, we'll come back with some very experienced linebackers next year when that was a, a question mark starting the season. But... Uh, yeah. Didn't help us this year that we lost Trey Goff, but getting an all OVC player back and having Jay Rudball and Trey Thompson that are doing most of the playing now, have Jonathan Coleman and Lanier Lee that have also played a whole lot right. turning back. We'll have five experienced linebackers on the squad next year. That'll be a big difference. Yeah, that'll be great. That'll be a big advantage. Well, one of the fun aspects of the pregame festivities is the Golden Eagle Walk. Let's see what Ben Vian has to say in our mic'd up segment brought to you by Pepsi. <laughs> What's going on? Yes, sir. The old cat's coming to town today. Are you the player of the week? No. I wish, man. Can they hear everything that I'm saying right now? I'm sure they can. You just made me look like an idiot. I'm the long snapper, man. You don't have an extra long baggy shirt back there? Oh, you're wearing sleeves and everything? Yeah, I'm wearing sleeves. Okay. Hey, but you don't have the extra long sleeve, dude. Extra long sleeve? Yeah. I might. I might. Like a long one, like this. Hey, Coach Sam said white tights on. Are you wearing this during the game? Are you wearing this during the game? No, you want it? Yeah, can I wear it? Thank you. Can I have a big day? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> man. Gotta get on your workout program, man. <laughs> You're yoked. Hey, do you have a hand warmer? Oh, uh, I got one in the specialty bag. Yeah, I'm on it. I'm on it. Today I will. It's cold and it's actually cold. Oh, that's a nice little bean right there, boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
one. Nice old brand name, what, about 30 bucks right there for that one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Getting ready for the for the cold uh, last week against uh, Eastern Illinois. And we picked one of the guys who hardly says anything. Hardly says anything to put the mic on. But, yeah. uh, and, and Ben's been a, a great snapper for us. We'll miss him. He's one of the few seniors we lose that we and, and we will miss lose him because of uh, two solid years. I think he's had one bad snap in two years. But another thing, buddy, real quick that I saw, <laughs> what a way to pick the goal, the walk. Uh, yeah. There was probably 15 people there. <laughs> I was really proud of those 15 people. Yeah. But, and we probably had 500 people at the game. I mean, it was cold now. I, it was very cold. And somebody said, uh, what do you think? I said, I wouldn't have been there. I'd have been at home watching somebody else play myself. There's no way I would have come to that ball game. My wife was one of those 500 that was there. Bless so I was her proud home. of her. Yeah. Bless her heart to be there. <laughs> It was cold. Of course, I was in the press box. So I, yeah, I didn't yeah. Know. You wouldn't have been there either yeah. if you weren't in the press That's box. That's exactly right. We know there have been some outstanding golfers at Tennessee Tech, and one of them is Adam Boyd. Let's see what Adam is up to in our Where Have They Landed segment, brought to you by the Golden Eagle Sports Network. I'm Adam Hunter Boyd. I, the years I was at Tech was from 1994 through 1999. I played golf for Bobby Nichols. Tennessee Tech University. I grew up in a small town called Ashland City, Tennessee, which everybody should know that being in Cookville, Tennessee. It's not that much bigger, but uh, um, I grew up playing all sports as most do when they were young, and then I guess I finally decided that I was best at golf. Anyway, I visited a few places and ended up uh, just really falling in love with Bobby Nichols. I, I fell in love with his passion for the game, I knew his history and I thought that Bobby would make me a much better player and the truth of the matter is Bobby was still trying to play himself but that's not neither here nor there. Bobby was a super, super guy and I mean he taught me everything he could when he could when his mind was not on his own game. So, <laughs> Bobby was definitely, we were cut from a different thread back then but uh, Bobby definitely influenced me and just watching his mannerisms on how he practiced and how he, he really, he strived to always be better. And the one thing I can honestly say about Bobby is I don't know if he had a hateful bone in his body. I mean, he really treated every individual, uh, every human being as nice as he could. And that might be partially in the golf business, uh, just trying to please everybody because he knows there's always competition, of course, getting people out to Ironwood versus White Plains or vice versa, but his, his generosity was overwhelming and uh, he really, really showed me what it's like to be a true gentleman in this game. Now I currently work at a club called Old Florida. I have been here for off and on since 2000, the year 2000. Um, I have two wonderful kids who we just started soccer with last night, so never thought I was going to be the responsible dad, but uh, you kind of grow up and you learn that uh, my son is now eight, my daughter is four, uh, married way above my head, my wife is way better than me, but uh, we can all outkick our coverage sometimes in that. Uh, and I am fortunate enough to work at uh, one of the premier clubs in Collier County and golf has taken me on a wild journey and uh, I guess, like I say, I have been fortunate enough to see most of the country just through golf, through different avenues, uh, through Tennessee Tech University, through uh, just chasing a little white golf ball around, I have been privileged to be at some of the finest golf courses in the country. I still get to play some. Not near as good as the legend has it, I promise you. Uh, but uh, can still play a little bit. And you know, I always look at it and I always say that uh, I'm a poor boy living in a rich man's world and through golf I have got to do more riches and great things than I would otherwise be privileged to do. So, my name is Adam Hunter Boyd, and that is where I've landed. Coach, I've seen Adam play a lot of golf. He was a big fixture here in the Upper Cumberland for a long time, but he looks so much different. He's lost about 50 pounds. He didn't have the dip in, and he had shoes on. Normally, we play golf in flip flops. 
and he could hit the ball farther in flip flops than anybody I've ever seen hit the ball. And then he outkicked his coverage. And then he outkicked his coverage. And changed everything. <laughs> yeah. Have we had some great golfers come through Tennessee Tech? Yeah. I mean, uh, a lot of our sports can say that, but I, I'm not so sure there hadn't been as more golfers than, than than any other sport. It's just of all the ones that I hear about, and, and of course I knew a lot of them. Yeah. But we've really had some good players. Bobby Nichols was a special man. I was going to say that's that's probably the one factor. Uh, he was able to get him in here and then taught him a lot uh, while he yep. was here. And was sure a great did. player and a great person. What what he said is absolutely right about Bobby. Yeah. Stick around. We got more Watson Brown show coming up. He'll be taking your Twitter questions. Plus, we'll be talking about this week's opponent, Southeast Missouri. Stay with us. Tennessee Tech tickets available at 931-372-3940 or ttusports.com. Welcome back to the Watson Brown Show, presented by IWC Cash and Carry. Hey, if you have a question for Coach Brown, you can tweet it at TTU Golden Eagles. And, Coach, of course, we do have some questions that have been tweeted in. Let's start with this one by RBG4000. He wants to know, with John Arnold and Jonathan King being redshirt freshmen, what can you say about the future of your special teams? Oh, it's 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 good. We won't have to recruit that for a while, will we? No, I mean, not, not at all. And and Jonathan may end up being our kickoff guy by next year too, because he's a very good kicker and a, a long field goal kicker. And I think John Arnold's leg will get stronger as he goes, where he can get a little more length with what he's done. Our punt team's been fantastic yeah, all year long, and really a lot is. of that reason is Ben has snapped the ball and. And Jonathan can place the ball so well. I mean, he does. he's such a good athlete. He can put it in this corner and that corner. I'm really excited about our kicking game. All right. Another Twitter question for you here. This one from Matthias Jackson. It seems like every time Van Leer touches the ball, something special happens. Just how does he impact the offense? Not enough, does he? <laughs> uh, I think that the play calling's got to go more toward not just doing X and O things, but making sure he touches it enough. Yeah. And, uh, so. We're going to try to do that this week. Uh, the last time we won, and the, every time we've won this year, we scored 30 points or more in every game. And so uh, when we don't, we just we just uh, not good enough uh, to to win if we don't put some points on the board. And and every time we've won, it seems like he's been a big factor in the 30 points. Yeah. So either that, with that, a kickoff return or a punt well, return or catches or, or, catches or, or, or carrying the football. So yeah. he's 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 got to carry the ball more. He is a special player. Well, it's time now to start talking about this week's opponent, and that is the Red Hawks of Southeast Missouri who come rolling in here. Coach, this was a team at the beginning of the season that got off to a, a really good start and was even ranked in the top 25, but has kind of come back to the pack now. Well, they've had injury. There's two of us that have been injured. This is the injury bowl because they've had a lot of players out too. And, um, you know, we played a lot of these same kids last year. They got a lot of returning players too. And we played our best game of the year at SEMO last year and beat, beat them really, really good. Sure did. Um, they're, they're much better than they were a year ago, in my opinion. You're seeing the same runs that we're running a lot right now, that, or we ran some Saturday when we got a tight end back on the field. And, and Darian had a fantastic game up there. Our defense just played lights out to, at SEMO last year. There's Trey Goff. I don't need to look at this, <laughs> seeing him shoot gaps and make plays. But uh, this is going to be a fantastic football game. I think it's a toss-up game. Yeah. Both people got players out. Both people had to adjust to certain things. Uh, they're much improved. I'm not sure we are. But I think uh, SEMO is a much better team than they were this time. But last probably the, the most evenly matched team that you've played in a while. Oh, it is. I mean, when you've played the big three that we just finished playing back to back to back, and that's happened to us twice this year. We we had to go to Indiana State, then go to Northern Iowa, then we had uh, TSU all on the road, all of them ranked, and then we've hit the same three-game deal where we had Jacksonville State, Eastern, Eastern Kentucky, Kentucky, and EIU back to back. So we'll see if we can survive that, come back with our heads up, and and not be wore out and see if we can play a really good game Saturday. And, of course, it's homecoming, so, you know, that has to factor in. Are the guys a little more motivated this week? They better think? be. I mean, it's, <laughs> they should be. Yeah. I think they will be. I think they'll feel the excitement around campus, and, and they're going to see a much better crowd Saturday than last Saturday when it was cold as it could be. Uh, we, we've got to go perform. We want, we want to put on a good show in front of our people. Well, the Golden Eagles will kick off with Southeast Missouri at 1.30. The homecoming parade is at 10.30. The... Uh, uh, the tailgate park will also open up at 1030, and, of course, you can listen to the game on uh, FM 98.5 KISS FM and read it all about it the next day in the Herald Citizen. Coach, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you, buddy. Look forward to it. All right. For Coach Watson Brown, I'm Buddy Pearson. We'll see you next week on the Watson Brown Show. The Watson Brown Show has been brought to you by 
IWC Cash and Carry, Wendy's Breakfast of Cookville, Zaxby's, Pepsi, and Miller Lite. With quality brand name products at affordable wholesale prices, Cash and Carry is the perfect place to shop. Whether shopping for individual, business, churches, or more, Cash and Carry is sure to meet your needs. Cash and Carry of Cookville, 931-528-8050.